What's up, Second North? Uh, so today's devotion is on Acts 17. I believe Cal is doing Acts 16. Uh, and this is a really good chapter, just really, really good. And the part that I want to highlight is the second half of Acts 17. Uh, so Paul is moving through Thessalonica and Berea, and like he's, he's moving through these towns preaching the gospel, right? And he comes to Athens, and this is where we pick up the story. So we will read all of 16 um, until, let's just read from 16 until 31. So here it goes. Now while Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him, as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace, every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some said, What does this babbler wish to say? Others said, He seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities, because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus. Areopagus. I don't know how to say that word. Areopagus. We're going to say that. Saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, 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 said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are a very religious. For as I pass along and observe the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this, is, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it. Being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on the face of having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God, and perhaps feel their way toward him, and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own prophets, poets, have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art of imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which we will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. So just a couple of quick thoughts. The text speaks for itself, obviously. Uh, but just this, I just have this image of Paul um, coming in, and it says that when Paul comes into Athens, he was provoked because he saw that the city was full of idols. And I can almost imagine like Paul walking into my life walking into the kingdom that is Derek Emerson uh, and just being provoked within him and um, seeing that the city was full of idols. Right now, for me, my idols are health and safety, uh, comfortability, um, future. I'm getting married. I just want to protect it, and uh, control. My idols are my image, uh, whether that's on social media or um, 
whether that's my body or um, whatever it may be, even even things like homework or schoolwork. There's just a lot of idols right now that I would guess that I'm not only struggling with, but others are struggling with as well. And Paul walks into this city and he proclaims that those idols are nothing worth value, nothing worth meaning. And to the Athenians, like Paul literally is preaching something that they don't understand. Like they have all of these gods and they worship even the unknown God, which is so much like our culture in a lot of ways in atheism and uh, deism. And people are like, yeah, there's a God, but like he doesn't have a name. Like he's the unknown God. And Paul's like, no, no, God is known. And God created this world for you to know him. And actually, he's not that far from us. We don't have to make him. He's not something out of our imagination. In a lot of, of culture, in, um, even, even myself, I think that God is the God that I think that he is. Like, however I imagine God, that's what God is. But that's not true. That's not true. That's a God of the imagination. Like, that's an idol that I'm forming. God is, is who he says he is. And I must bow down and submit to that God. And, and Paul calls the Athenians um, and myself and, and you guys to repent from the ideology of that we can make God and shape God whatever ways that we want. But God is who he says he is. He is the I am. And he gives life and he gives breath. And it's only from knowing that God, like the true God, not the ones that we make up in our head or that we bow down to from on earth. But it is the encounter with this true God that gives mankind, mankind life and breath and everything. Um, and, and that God is, he's so close. He's so close. And right now it's really scary and it's a hard time and is really uncertain and the future is weird. But that God is close to us, my friends. He's very close to us. And uh, I love verse 27. In verse 26 and 27, uh, he said, Having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God, meaning whoever God has created, God's people, they should seek God and perhaps feel their way towards him and find him. He's actually not far from each one of us. I just love the idea of us like trying to feel around to like find God. It's kind of like we're, we're in the dark. But I believe that the Holy Spirit like leads us and guides us in this time and takes our hands and just like leads us toward God. And God is just so close. Um, right now in this time where things seem really dark um, I would ask that you would just lean upon God and trust in Him and, and feel your way through the darkness and find Him in whatever situation that you're in because uh, He's a lot closer than you think Amen I thank you guys uh, for just being my brothers in Christ I pray that you would uh, pray for me as I try to feel my way through the darkness and know that God is a lot closer than I think. Um, may the God of peace and love uh, shine his light upon you in this time, and may you find him close. Amen.